What is the best lens for portrait photography? If you're struggling to take epic portraits that your clients just can't wait to purchase 5,000 copies of, pretty good chance your lens has something to do with it. In this video, I'm gonna give you my three favorite lenses for taking stunning portraits to blow your clients' minds. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California, and I've been doing this since 2010. I bought a lot of gear that I didn't need, and I've learned over time what really works well for portraits and what you don't need also. Pretty much three choices based on your style. We are artists first and foremost, so we want to create beautiful art. That's why we got into photography in the first place. And knowing how to create stunning portraits is kind of one of the basic things that every photographer needs, because whether it's seniors or families or boudoir or headshots, whatever, it all comes down to the fundamentals of portraits. And your lenses are going to significantly impact all of that. A lens is a tool for a job. There is no one best lens for everything. It doesn't exist. That's like saying, well, what is the best kind of car? Well, are we racing Lamas or do we need to speed up a dirt hill? Because a Ferrari is great for one and a monster truck probably better for the other one. So figure out what the job is that you need and then you can get the right lens for that. That's what I'm gonna walk you through. So my three favorite lenses, my 35 millimeter, my 50 millimeter, and a 70 to 200. Let's dive in. All right, firstly, 35 millimeter. Looks just like this guy, because it is. And what's cool about the 35 millimeter, it's a little bit wide angle. It's not true to the eye. And by that, I mean a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera sees the way our eyes see. A 35 millimeter is gonna give us a little more of a wider angle. It's gonna stretch things a little bit more. And what I love about the 35 millimeter is it's great for people who are a little on the short side because you can shoot up at them and it will elongate them. Or if you wanna slim somebody down, you don't have to shoot above somebody's head, but if you shoot at eye level and you position them in a specific way for their shot, it will move the body farther away and due to the way optics work, things that are farther from the camera appear smaller. So you can help slim people down easier with that 35 millimeter. Now notice this isn't an 18 to 55, this isn't a 24 to 70, it is just 35. I love prime lenses because, again, it's a tool for a job. The fewer things a tool does, the odds are it's gonna be way better at the one thing that it does, and these are. So this can open up to f1.8. This is the Nikon Z series, or S series 35 millimeter 1.8. And opening up to f1.8 does a couple things. It allows me to shoot in lower light situations because I can open the aperture larger, but also shallower depth of field. And this is where the magic happens in portraits. Yes, the lighting, the expression, but the shallow depth of field. I can get laser focus on the eyeballs, everything else. I mean, tip of the nose will be out of focus, the ear will be out of focus. We can get that shallow with the focus on prime lenses, whereas zoom lenses will generally go down to maybe f2.8, 3.5, f4, somewhere around there. Still pretty good, but nowhere near a 1.8, 1.4, or a 1.2. So I definitely recommend getting prime lenses because of the shallow depth of field, and they're a lot sharper. A prime lens will 99% of the time, unless there's a defect, be sharper than a zoom lens because they're designed to do one thing and they do it really, really well. All right, lens number two, the Nifty 50. This is a staple in every portrait photographer's bag because it sees how our eyes see. This is great for something uh, with more like a photojournalistic feel. Also, consider the space of your environment. If you don't have a ton of room to step back with a telephoto lens, like what I'm gonna get into, maybe you're in a small space, the 50 is gonna allow you to get a great headshot of somebody or a great portrait without needing you know, 40 feet between you. And it's not wide angle like the 35 is. So again, true to the eye. This won't warp or distort anything. Beautiful portraits. Uh, this one, also the S series from Nikon. It's for the mirrorless line. I love these. I also use a Nikon mirrorless camera, so that's what makes sense for me. But the 1.8 aperture gives me super shallow depth of field. The focus is crazy sharp. Just beautiful portraits where nothing is distracting in the background 
and I know that it's going to look the way that I want it to. All right, the last lens, the 70 to 200. Now you can get a 135, you can get a 100 millimeter macro lens. There are other great options as well. I love the 70 to 200 for a couple reasons. Uh, one, you might notice it's the only zoom lens in my lineup here. And I don't want to buy the 100, the 35, or like a 200 millimeter prime. I just, I don't need that sort of thing. But because of the way optics work, the longer the focal length, meaning, you know, 200 millimeters is longer than 50, you get a shallower depth of field at the same aperture value. So I can get a shallower depth of field at f2.8 with this guy than I can with my 50. So if I want the razor thin depth of field, 1.8 over here, I can get it at 2.8 with the longer lens. So I'm not sacrificing depth of field at all, uh, but I'm getting a little more versatility because sometimes I might want 200, sometimes I might want 70, and it's still gonna be razor sharp. This is one of the brand new S series lenses also, the 70 to 200 2.8 from Nikon. And all of this is on the Boudoir Guild's blog. Uh, I'll post the link down below, my entire list of gear. So you can go pick this up if you wanna use these also. And what's great about this lens, stunning portraits, shallow depth of field. You don't have to be as close to somebody because you can do outdoor portraits as well with them. But I love this for the detail shots because I don't just use it for portraits in the boudoir studio. Detail shots on the clothing, on the jewelry, on different body parts, whatever it may be. That's another reason I love this. So still a very versatile lens that serves many purposes in my bag. So that's why I love my 70 to 200. So there you go. Those are the three lenses I believe every portrait photographer should play with. And if you're not sure which one works best for you, rent them. Uh, your local camera store might rent lenses or go to borrowlenses.com. There are a ton of places where you can rent camera gear for you know, 10 to 20 bucks a day, and then you can test drive it. And oftentimes, if you then go purchase the gear from that same store, they'll credit your rental toward your purchase. You can also pick up used gear. You don't have to buy everything new if you don't want to. It is a business expense. I like to buy the new things, but I buy the newest, latest, greatest, and I won't have to replace these for years and years and years, which that I'm really excited about. So again, the 35 millimeter is great, little bit wide angle, stunning portrait lens. 50, true to the eye, absolute classic. And your 70 to 200 is better when you need to get a little bit farther away, but also it's great for the detail shots when you wanna vary things a little bit. And again, link down below on my blog, I explain why I love all of these and you can get links to find them right there. I've got other videos on here about how to actually take the pictures with the lenses. And if you wanna know even more, or head to boudoirguild.com and you can check out the posing course, the lighting course, or the sales and pricing if you want to know how to start making money with all of this expensive gear. You are amazing. See you inside.